Good afternoon from Columbia University in the city of New York. My name is Tanya Domi and I am an adjunct professor with the Hureman Institute's Balkan Studies program. The Hureman Institute at Columbia University is one of the world's leading academic institutions for the study of Russia, Eurasia, and East Central Europe. Our mission is to serve our community at the university and beyond by supporting research, instruction, and dialogue, sponsoring vibrant and multidisciplinary events that bring together our extraordinary resources of faculty, students, and alumni. We are committed to training the next generation of regional specialists to play leadership roles in setting the academic and scholarly agenda making policy and challenging accepted truths about how we study our rapidly changing world. Today, the Hearman Institute and the Cooperberg Holocaust Center at the Queens Community College, led by my colleague, Dr. Lori Cohen, are co-convening this Holocaust Symposium uh, on Yom Shoah Day, Holocaust Remembrance Day, with an examination that began earlier this morning of Bulgaria. The second part of the day will focus on the former Yugoslavia. And our second panel's title is The Fates of the Roma and Sinti During the Holocaust in the Former Yugoslavia. This panel discusses the initial findings of a new research report commissioned by the Auschwitz Institute for the Prevention of Genocide and Mass Atrocities and the FXB Center for Health and Human Rights at Harvard University. Uh, I would like to mention that this is our second collaboration with the FXB Center and with Dr. Magda Matash, who's the director of the Roma Center. I'm really delighted to welcome her back uh, with us at Hiraman. This ongoing collaboration is very meaningful to the Hiraman Institute. So it's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mate Demetriscu, who joined the Auschwitz Institute for the Prevention of Genocide and Mass Atrocities in 2020 as the program officer for the AIPG's Mediterranean Basin Programs and the Global Raphael Limpkin Seminar for Genocide Prevention. I'd like to give you the uh, microphone now, Dr. Dimitriscu, and share with our audience this undertaking and funding by the Auschwitz Institute with respect to Roma and Sinti people during the Holocaust in the former Yugoslavia. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Domi, and uh, good evening uh, from Bucharest. Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation. It is a great pleasure to be here tonight and uh, present briefly uh, an overview of a project which is very dear to the Auschwitz Institute. Uh, but before that, uh, I would like to begin with a short presentation of the Auschwitz Institute for the Prevention of Genocide and Mass Atrocities, AIPG, uh, for those who do not know us yet. So the Auschwitz Institute is a non-governmental organization that supports states to develop or strengthen policies and practices for the prevention of genocide and other mass atrocities. Uh, we do that through education programs, uh, customized training, technical assistance, and research. Uh, we work worldwide, and uh, we have regional offices established in New York, Buenos Aires, uh, Kampala, Oshvienci at the formal site, former site of the Auschwitz concentration camp, and in Bucharest. Uh, although we work Mainly with state representatives, we also provide flexible frameworks of dialogue uh, between government officials, civil society representatives, and academia uh, in the attempt to overcome communication gaps between important stakeholders and to help state institutions to further the development of preventive policies, both domestically and within international fora. And uh, this brings me uh, to the context of the project that we are discussing today. Uh, its starting point was a regional seminar 
uh, organized by AAPG with the support of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, uh, the IRA, in 2019. Uh, the seminar welcomed uh, in Bucharest uh, government officials, uh, representatives of civil society organizations and academia from 11 countries from Southeastern Europe, with the goal to discuss efficient ways to counter Roma genocide distortion through governmental action and to build the capacity of government actors for promoting and protecting the civil and human rights of Roma. Uh, the findings of the event and uh, of the subsequent consultations that we conducted in the region were quite sobering. Uh, we could conclude that the level of knowledge about the Roma genocide in the public sphere is very low throughout Southeastern Europe. Uh, and that progress in research was made, however, it remained isolated. Uh, furthermore, there is a crucial need for continuous action and customized training informed by the complex, complex region, uh, history of the region. So, for instance, uh, developing toolkits for local and central administrations, uh, police forces, agencies dealing with Roma topics. Another finding of, uh, of the seminar was that there is a significant communication gap between policymakers, uh, civil society, and academia. And last but not least, uh, it turned that during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the region has seen a resurgence of anti-Roma sentiment, uh, which was fueled by practices of scapegoating uh, that illustrate a dangerous continuation of the patterns of discrimination that led in the first place to the Roma genocide. So uh, this led us to the conclusion that a logic continuation of the seminar would be to develop a comprehensive uh, regional research report that would offer an overview of the state of the art regarding the level of knowledge around the Roma genocide in Southeastern Europe and provide recommendation on countering distortion uh, as key elements for developing anti-racism strategies and anti-discrimination policies and practices. We were quite lucky to be able to cooperate within this research project with experts whom we met during the initial regional seminar. And uh, I'm mentioning here, especially uh, Magda, Lenka and uh, Hikmet, and uh, who have been ever since dear dialogue partners over the last months. Uh, we were also delighted uh, to partner uh, with the FXB Center for Health and Human Rights at Harvard University and to convince uh, Dr. Magda Matake to take up the challenge of being the academic coordinator of this uh, ambitious project. Uh, the research has been carried out over the last month in 11 Southeastern European countries, namely Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia, Greece, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Romania, Serbia, Slovenia, and Kosovo. The first stage of the project uh, consisted of the development of 11 country studies uh, by 11 national experts. Uh, the case studies had three main goals. Uh, the first goal was to assess the current level of knowledge regarding the Roma genocide and the historical and social phenomena that contributed to the perpetration of genocidal violence against the Roma in the target countries. Uh, the second goal was to identify in each country uh, specific mechanisms of distortion of the genocide and their root causes as well as to assess the state's and civil society's response in the process of monitoring and addressing uh, those mechanisms of distortion. Uh, finally, the last goal was to locate best practices to address Roma genocide distortion. And this has become even more challenging in an era marked by the emergence of post-truth politics and the proliferation of hate speech, both online and offline. So in order to do this, uh, a common methodology was developed as a foundation for the case studies, uh, defining research methods from bibliographical to archival research, to analy 
analysis of key documents and discourse analysis, uh, semi-structured interviews and content analysis, both on media and uh, social media. All uh, national case studies were built on the same structure around the following themes, uh, history, uh, acknowledgement, memorialization, and awareness of the Roma genocide, distortion and the impact of distortion and recommendation. And this brings us to the uh, second stage of our project uh, that consisted in the development of an overarching research report informed by the findings of the 11 case studies. Uh, among other topics, this uh, research report investigates the nexus between the level of knowledge about the Roma genocide in the public sphere and genocide distortion and the present day manifestations of anti-Roma racism. It also investigates the main historical and social phenomena that led to mass atrocities targeting Roma in Southeastern Europe during the Holocaust, as well as distortions of the past and civil and civil uh, and state and civil society responses to address them, uh, the perpetuation of these distorted narratives in present times and their instrumentalization in scapegoating processes and increased anti-Roma violence. Uh, another objective of the report is to investigate potential patterns regarding distortion, discrimination, and marginalization of the Roma and their risk uh, for collective violence against Roma. And finally, uh, the report will also measure, will, will also examine, sorry, measures that uh, could be implemented to counteract distortion and to prevent racial discrimination and the escalation of uh, identity-based violence. So uh, identify uh, best practices in this, in this regard. Uh, the research report is currently uh, finalized by uh, Dr. Magda Matake, our uh, academic coordinator. Uh, it will be published in an uh, online format and will be presented at the end of, of May. And uh, on behalf of the Auschwitz Institute, it is uh, our greatest pleasure to extend uh, an invitation to you to debate the findings of the report uh, during a virtual launching event, which will also take, take place at the end of, uh, of May. Uh, I would like to end my brief introduction here and uh, give the stage to Magda, Alenka, Hikmet and uh, Christo, who will present in more detail some of the preliminary and partial findings of our uh, joint endeavor. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. And we thank the Auschwitz Institute for funding this really important uh, research. And there's a gap in the literature and a gap in in knowledge about the genocide of Roma. So it's very, very important. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, and that is uh, Professor Alenka Jankos Reitzer, who's an associate professor of anthropology at the University of Primorska Faculty of Humanities in the Department of Anthropology and Cultural Studies she is also a senior research fellow at the Institute of Intercultural Studies and an internationally recognized social anthropologist who does her field work research among Romani groups in Slovenia and elsewhere. She will discuss her research, who will make a presentation on her research with respect to Slovenia. You now have the microphone, Professor Spicer. Good afternoon to everybody and thank you for the kind invitation to this webinar. Um, and also I am very thankful to Magda Margarita Matace who sent us questions for these presentations, which is very helpful to be short and punctual. Uh, I'd like to explain what happened to Roma in Slovenia during the Holocaust and Second World War. Um, several, uh, several Roma and Sinti communities of Slovenia had different destinies in different territories during the Second World War in Slovenia because Slovenia was divided between four different occupational regimes. 
Victims of Nazi per persecution were communities in nowadays northwest part of Slovenia, which became part of the German Reich in 1941. Roma and Sinti were among the first people in Upper Carniola and some of Carinthia to be arrested and brought to the Gestapo prisons in Begunie in April 1941. According to the Begunie Book of Prisoners, the people identified as gypsies and transport, were transported to Serbia were 107. Arrested by Kripo or Gendarmerie on racial grounds, the majority were Sinti. Some scholars have so far been unable to determine what happened to these people, but we confirmed that some Sinti returned from Slovenia, from Serbia to Slovenia. Sinti author Di Riccardi also claimed that around 400 Roma were killed in concentration camps and three, 350 in the liberation war. And he also said that around 50 people returned to Slovenia. Uh, after the capitulation of Italy, Nazi Germany transported 77 people to Auschwitz with the transport on December 2nd, 1943. There were 77 people. Those were Roma from Novo Mesto, south eastern part of Slovenia. Uh, Italian fascist authorities have not systematically persecuted the Roma. That's the official explanation of the historians. But officers proposed Roma should be interned as socially dangerous gypsies, all of Slavic origin and without defined citizenship. In 1942, fascists interned 78 Roma and sent them to concentration camps. 16 Roma died of Italian as victims of Italian occupational units. In Prekmurje, northeastern part of Slovenia, 26 people were transported to forced labor camps in Hungarian territories, and many of them died due to starvation or overwork. Uh, six Roma were additionally killed as hostages at that territories. The number of Roma people from Slovenia also died in Jasenovac. That is actually presumption, but um, it is still unknown how many people suffered in this camp or how many people uh, are actually were registered uh, from at the Slovenian territory. So that would be the short description what happened to the Roma and Sinti uh, during the Nazi and fascist occupation. Thank you. Um, our second speaker is Dr. Hikmet Karsic, who is a genocide and Holocaust scholar based in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. He was the 2017 Auschwitz Institute Keene State College Global Fellow who has written extensively on geno genocide, denial and atrocity prevention. He is my, my dear colleague and friend. I'm happy to welcome him back once again to the Harriman Institute. You now have the microphone, Hikmet. Thank you so much, Tanya, and uh, thank you for organizing this very important uh, event on such a uh, virtually unknown, un unknown, un and under-researched uh, topic. And I think that's one of the common uh, uh, conclusions that that we as researchers in this project came out, came along while we were uh, researching each of these country reports. Is that in most cases the the cases that there's not enough materials uh, or research done so far on these issues. And uh, since I was doing Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, with, whole, with the whole entire complexity uh, of, of the Second World War in, in, in Bosnia during the Holocaust, uh, there was even less written uh, on, on, on the Roma. Uh, and virtually uh, the case was that the post-war Yugoslav historiography in a large sense ignored the suffering of the Roma 
to, to a large, large extent, even when the State Commission for Gathering War uh, uh, Data on War Crimes, when they were gathering this, uh, this information, they did not even use the term Roma at all. Uh, for so even in cases where, where they did document some of the crimes, we don't know that, that it's Roma in question. We can guess or we can uh, al al along the lines of, of surnames or uh, mi micro locations or villages uh, or, or through oral history, we can come up, come up, come to certain conclusions about the suffering of Roma in this case. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is uh, interesting. Uh, I would say a sui generis uh, uh, example because in a case study, which which is different from from other from other regions, uh, similarly to what Alenka said regarding Slovenia, Bosnia itself was not a separate country during, during the Holocaust. It was part of the independent state of Croatia. However, it, it did have uh, some different elements within within its uh, territory. Um, some sort of uh, semi-autonomy, which was not uh, any administrative whatsoever, but rather the Muslim population in Bosnia had a much more stronger control over its own uh, religious and administrative affairs. So in the case of the Roma, uh, especially in the case of Roma Muslims, the, the attitude towards uh, Roma Muslims was much more different than in, in relation to other Roma in, for example, in Serbia or in Montenegro and in other, other uh, areas of the other case studies. Uh, so, for example, uh, according to the archives of the Islamic community, which I had access to from the Second World War, uh, I found several very important documents which show actually that on a local level, the Muslim uh, clerics and population in certain small villages and towns protected their neighbors, Roma neighbors, uh, basically on, on the fact that they were, uh, they, they themselves were practicing Muslims. Um, secondly, the, 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 the local Muslim, Bosniak Muslim population did not, um, did not trust the Ustasha regime. They knew that if the Roma were subjected to uh, racial profiling, that the Bosniaks uh, in the future can also be subjected to such profiling itself and be victims of, of, of mass violence. Thus, uh, it, it is a very uh, specific case that in Bosnia, two, uh, in two towns, uh, which I could find, uh, in, in Zenca, in central Bosnia, and Bogoino, also central Bosnia, where most of the Roma population was located, uh, there, there were two resolutions, so public letters of condemnation of crimes committed against Roma which were signed by uh, the, the elites, the Bosnian elites, so, uh, clerics, uh, judges, lawyers, historians, and so on. And also in another, uh, in another uh, case, a certain team of uh, Bosniak historians made an analysis uh, which they sent to the Ministry of uh, Interior of the Ustasha regime to actually show them that according to uh, German anthropologists, the Roma who live in Bosnia are in fact Aryans and thus they, they do not fall uh, uh, under the, the racial laws which were imposed by the independent state of Croatia. This was um, uh, a, 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 a way how they found a loophole in the law in order to save or attempts to save a large number of, of the Roma itself. Of course, these uh, reactions from the Bosnian population did not entirely stop the killings which were going on against the Roma population, but they did hinder to uh, to some extent, at least in some of these uh, local populations in mean, these mixed areas, they did hinder a lot um, the killings itself and the persecution because the Ustasha regime was afraid that, the, that uh, if they continue this kind of persecution, the, the attitude of the Bosniaks would be much more oriented towards the partisan movement, which in the, in the end it, it was uh, in, 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 19, in the late 1942. So basically, uh, in, in, in the case of Bosnia, there were uh, many massacres which were committed by local militias. And basically, uh, the, the Roma were killed by each and every armed force which was in Bosnia at that time. So even by the partisans, by the SS, by uh, local Muslim militias, by uh, the Ustasha, by the, the Chetnik forces, by basically everyone. So, so they were the collateral damage to some extent 
uh, where you know in 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 in, in some of the cleansing processes of certain villages, if they would if a certain armed group would come across Roma, they would you know kill them along the way as well. Um, and of course, th this is a, a, a part of the history of, of our country and of our region, which is entirely unknown, which is which is not talked about, and uh, which has been to a large extent ignored. Because uh, firstly, it's very hard to come across any uh, information about these things. So as I previously said, um, the documentation on these cases is very scarce. So very very. Very little, so you need to really dig deep uh, into archives in order to, to, you know, put together a puzzle of, of the events which was going on. And secondly, um, this is an uninteresting topic. Nobody really cares about about the suffering of the Roma in Bosnia. That is something which I think we will touch upon in the later phase of our of our discussion. Uh, this total ignorance of of of, of events, um, a lack of interest of any sort. Um, I mean, just an illustration. In the last, uh, you know, half in the last thirty years, uh, there's a, there's been only one PhD on Roma in Bosnia uh, regarding the Second World War, and the 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 works which were done uh, before were were very very uh, were were done in a very bad shape. So so this shows to you to what extent the 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 Roma population is being treated today in Bosnia. Thank you, Hickman, very much. Um, I am now delighted to introduce our third speaker, Professor Dr. Hristo Kuchukov, is a German scientist. He's a native Bulgarian, and he is also a professor of intercultural education at the University of Silesia, Katowice. Poland. He is known in Europe and worldwide for his educational and linguistic research with Roma children, for his research on Romani language, history, and culture. Uh, he will discuss his research on the Roman Sinti in Bulgaria. It is um, an, an honor to welcome you to the Herman Institute, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tanya, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, actually, writing uh, my chapter and doing the research on uh, Roma during the Second World War in Bulgaria was a very, very difficult task because uh, of the following reasons. Uh, during the Second World War, Bulgaria was ally of Germany and the Bulgarian Roma and Jewish uh, the, the, the Jewish population were, were not sent to concentration camps. Uh, Bulgarian uh, Tsar, the Bulgarian king, saved uh, in quotation mark the, the Bulgarian Roma and uh, Jewish population. But uh, actually this is a myth because um, one part of the Jewish population was sent uh, to the concentration camp in Treblinka in Poland. And, uh, but of course, the Bulgarian uh, historians do not speak about this fact. And uh, this uh, fact was uh, known to us after the democratic changes in 1990s. And uh, as well, um, there are no any publications about uh, the Roma situation uh, during the Second World War and what happened to uh, Roma exactly. Recently, I bought uh, this beautiful book. Maybe you can see it. The title is The Stolen Narrative of the Bulgarian Jews and the Holocaust by Jackie Conforti and Maria Bloomfield, Marta Bloomfield, I'm sorry. And uh, I was searching about the literature in Bulgarian and in uh, English or other languages. Uh, what is written and what happened to Roma during the Second World War, and there was no information about this. As well, I was trying to find some documents in the archives or at the National uh, Library of Bulgaria, but unfortunately there was no any publications, any research, any, any work done. The only thing what I was hearing is, yeah, the gypsies should be thankful to the Bulgarian Tsar 
at the beginning. And after that, they were saying to Todor Zhivkov, that Todor Zhivkov was the Bulgarian uh, uh, president for many, many years, something like uh, 30 years, 35 years, and uh, that they, they saved the Bulgarian Roma. But uh, there was no publication, there was no research, there was no any documents in the archives, in the libraries. This what was known that the Bulgarian Roma, part of them, some of them, were participating as partisans on the side of uh, Bulgarians against uh, the fascism, the fascist and the Nazi Germans, although that Bulgaria was uh, ally. And uh, there were some uh, Roma who were very famous after uh, the liberation of Bulgaria uh, in 1945. They were known, some few Roma who were very famous partisans, but that's all. And uh, this, what I had to do was uh, to go to one method, which is not so popular in history, but more popular in ethnography, ethnology, uh, cultural anthropology, which is uh, the oral history. And um, I was telling the, my family, I'm actually Roma and uh, by ethnic origin. And uh, in my family, I remember uh, the stories of my grandparents from my father's side. During the Second World War, my father was uh, the 11th child and uh, uh, he was baby when uh, one day the uh, Roma in my native town, approximately 3,000 people got an order to go to the uh, train station and there were trains uh, waiting for the Roma to be uh, deported to another country, another town. They didn't remember the name of the country. They didn't remember the, the name of the city or town. And I was telling this story to uh, several uh, Bulgarian historians and they were saying, no, there is no such a thing. These are lies, you know. We cannot trust this because there are no any documents, any evidences in Bulgarian archives to prove that such a thing happened to Bulgarian Roma. And then uh, when I was uh, working with the Bulgarian archives, and it was extremely difficult to work with the Bulgarian archives in the uh, period of pandemia. I was, I'm in Berlin and I had to call to Bulgarian archives in, uh, in different cities. And uh, thanks God, there, there are uh, digitalized, uh, most of the archives are digitalized and uh, everyone can have an access uh, from every point of the world. And uh, in the um, catalogs, I was finding some documents uh, regarding Chroma. And when I was ordering the document, usually the answer was, well, the document is missing. There is no such a document. And then I was asking, but how it's possible? You know, it's impossible that in your catalog is written that under this number, there is such a such document and you cannot provide it to me. And the explanation was during the communist regime, some of the people working in the archives, if they decided that these documents are not important and no one is interested in these documents, they were simply destroying or burning all these documents. So there was no any single way to get access to the uh, archives, uh, I mean, to the documents in archives because there were no documents. I was working with three different uh, archives. And then I started to use this method of um, oral history to make interviews with uh, Roma who had uh, grandparents or their parents, people who are uh, between 40 and 95 years old so the, the number of the interviews were not so many, but the information which I received was extremely important. And uh, they were um, in support of this uh, hypothesis that the official governmental policy was that we are not going to deport the Roma to concentration camps, but on local level, actually there was different types of uh, genocide against Roma. And uh, <laughs> I was speaking even with the representatives of the Bulgarian government. There is a National Council of uh, Ethnic uh, Relations in Bulgaria. And uh, they, they were saying exactly the same thing. I mean, that they were repeating that there was no any genocide. And when I uh, questioned them with uh, those facts, with those interviews, they were behaving like we don't know anything about this and no one wrote about this. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no 
even uh, any mention of uh, something like this, what I was finding in my uh, interviews, what I found in my interviews, in the uh, most recent publication in English, and this book was published in uh, 2021, uh, just a year ago, and uh, there is uh, very few reliable uh, publications in Bulgarian language uh, on uh, Jewish uh, population, what happened during the Second World War, and also there is a, one, a very important thing, one very important thing in Bulgaria, that uh, in Bulgaria you can buy uh, the on any almost any uh, bookshop uh, the book of uh, Hitler, Adolf Hitler, my camp, my camp, uh, my my fight, and uh, you can buy or in the in the national library when I was searching what exists on um, Holocaust in Bulgaria. I found some publications translated into Bulgarian language, which are questioning of uh, existence of Holocaust, that uh, there was no any Holocaust against the Jewish people and the Holocaust is lie and all, all kinds of things. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they are in the public um, libraries uh, and no one does anything to, to be taken those books uh, out from the libraries. And the very last thing, when I was asking them about uh, the government, I mean, the, the two ladies from the Bulgarian government about 2nd August, uh, the International Day, European Day of uh, Roma Holocaust commemoration, commemoration uh, they were saying that, yeah, yeah, we commemorate this, but actually this is done only by the gov uh, non-governmental organizations. And actually, there is no governmental decision that uh, this uh, day, 2nd of August, will be officially recognized as a national day of Roma commemoration, Roma genocide, Roma Holocaust, whatever. And now, uh, thanks to this project, uh, this gave me idea that I should write a letter to the Bulgarian prime minister, and I did it some 10 days ago, two weeks ago, asking them, uh, could you please provide me any official document uh, that 2nd of August is acknowledged in Bulgaria as an international uh, Roma genocide day, and I'm still waiting for the answer. I will stop here, and thank you very much. You are muted, Tanya. Sorry about that. I apologize. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Margareta Matace, who is a scholar from Romania and director of the FXB Center for Health and Human Rights Roma program. She's also a Harvard instructor. Her research and teaching focus is on the history and manifestations of anti-Roma racism as well as the global history of race and racism. Uh, I just also wanna commend her. She is, was generous enough to share her draft chapter with me. She's going to cover the rest of Southeastern Europe in her capacity as the scholar, um, scholar in charge of this research. And um, she has gone to great lengths to define uh, genocide denial and distortion of the Roma in this draft. And uh, I think it's going to be a significant addition to, to these definitions that are actually held by the U.S. Holocaust Museum. Uh, you now have the microphone, Margaret, uh, Magda, and I'm so happy you're back at Harriman. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation and indeed, one of the of the chapters of, of this study uh, is focusing on on distortion and denial but the the way in which this regional study is structured is to start with the history which we discussed uh, uh, now and we are dis still discussing and then to focus on acknowledgement and memorialization and finally to look at distortion and denial and in this conversation today we'll continue uh, with with acknowledgement and then perhaps talk about um, categories of distortion as well but i would like to to build a little bit 
elaborate on what my colleagues have said and perhaps state the, the obvious. The, the history of the Second World War in Southeastern Europe was complex and intricate. Um, during World War II, the history of the Roma in the 11 countries reviewed in our study involved on one hand genocide and genocidal attempt and mass killings, war crimes, deportations, forced labor, and on the other hand, specific forms of anti-Roma or anti-Romani racism. For instance, when it comes to the Holocaust, um, in Romania, the means of extermination used by the Antonescu regime included deportations, internment sites, mass shootings, starvation, and disease. And as a result, 11,000 Roma people died. And this is a very conservative estimation. And actually across the region, we can see that most of the official numbers of, of, um, of Roma people who are dead are uh, usually conservative estimations. And similarly in Croatia, for instance, the extermination methods involve deportations, mass killings, concentration camps, extermination sites, starvation and disease. However, the total number of Croatian Roma killed during the Holocaust remains unknown. But we, we, we do know, uh, or what we know is that in uh, Jasenovac, the largest concentration camp in Southeastern Europe, up to 20,000 Roma people were killed. And similar methods of extermination were used also in Serbia, but also in Kosovo, where, for example, we identified roundups, uh, transportation to concentration camps in other countries, killings, rape, and starvation. And unfortunately, we, we, didn't, we didn't find a lot of data on, on gender-based violence. Um, uh, but in some of, of the country reports, we, we, we did identify uh, uh, the use of rape as um, a war crime, uh, but also uh, as part of the, of the larger methods of extermination and, uh, and genocide. But on this spectrum, of World War II injustices, there were also countries like Albania, where Roma were not victims of the Holocaust or genocidal policies, but Albanian Roma suffered many manifestations of anti-Roma racism in all areas of, lives, of life. Many of, of the archival documents from 1920s to 1940s that Rami Hadroy, the country-based uh, researcher, found in the Albanian archive shows that Roma were not allowed to live in or near towns. They faced evictions and physical se segregation and also very overt forms of rejection. And the language of this was very much similar to the language that was used and the vocabulary that, that was used in the countries where Roma did experience the Holocaust. So Roma were, for instance, seen as a big threat to society and were stamped as social and moral destroyers a people who could not make their living in how, how these uh, archives show in a hum, human way. How, however, there is extremely scarce research and knowledge about the history of the Albanian Roma during World War II. And that is also the case of Greece, Montenegro, Bulgaria, Kosovo, Bosnia, Slovenia, and most countries in, in the region. And I, I would conclude this part, although there is so much to say about the history uh, of the Roma in, in Southeastern Europe during those times, but I, I would just say that the persecution and extermination of Roma and Sinti people by the Nazi and ally regimes constituted wide, wide ranging processes in a very long history of anti-Roma racism. And so have the consequent and the subsequent endeavors to overlook, silence, misrepresent, distort, uh, distort the Roma Holocaust. But I think that we'll talk about um, denial and distortion uh, later. Um, but I hope we can switch to, to, to acknowledgement and memorialization next. I just want to say that. The thing that is uh, remarkable about a consistency in these presentations is the missing documents or uh, documents that were probably destroyed, as Risto uh, suggested. And uh, as also uh, Hikmet has said, uh, that there just wasn't any documents. And I think that 
is erasure, and that also is genocide denial as well, if not active, uh, active genocide distortion. So I, I just think that is a consistent, uh, you know, what I see as a systematic theme throughout all the presentations. Um, who, who would like to uh, make comments now about memorialization? Who would like to go first? Anybody? Uh, I just, I just want to. I, I can't speak to World War II, but I will say this about Bosnia Herzegovina, an organization that I am affiliated with, uh, uh, is the Post Conflict Research Center, who is engaging in memorialization of Roma, not only genocide but about the role of Roma in contemporary Bosnia-Herzegovina, the suffering and the discrimination. So that's a relatively new initiative in Bosnia with the OSCE mission there. And I would also add that my colleague in uh, Belgrade, Goran Milicic, has actually organized Roma rights marches in Belgrade something that nobody else has done. Uh, these are just some contemporary examples, but I would like to hear more from all of you about what you found in your research. I think Matt, would you like to start and then perhaps Alenka and Christo, and then I will uh, uh, summarize the region. Sure, sure. Okay, so uh, I think the, the issue of memorialization was something which I found very interesting in the case of, of Bosnia, and I think it's, it was quite similar in the former Yugoslavia, but in the case of Bosnia itself, I only found one exact memorial which dealt with, uh, which mentioned the suffering of the Roma. Now, the issue with um, uh, Roma, the issue with memorialization in, in the, in the post-Bosnia, uh, uh, post-war period in Yugoslavia was that there were the ethnic groups or or, or um, the nationalities were not named. So so in most of the of the memorials it was written, I think this is a case in, in all former socialist countries, the victims of fascism, you know, that, that was what it was what was written there. So uh, in, in Bosnia I found only one memorial uh, in, in northern Bosnia where uh, the term Roma what was, was used, and this is a memorial which was built sometime in the late 1980s. And uh, what we can see there as well is that in other cases where we know that in these certain villages, like in one, one village near, uh, near Tuzla, uh, where Roma were killed, uh, where, where the entire village was, was destroyed, and where there was a memorial for the Roma, uh, these memorials were destroyed in the post-1992-1995 war. Uh, they were destroyed in a way, way that not, not systematically, but rather most of these memorials had different different types of uh, copper or iron used on, on them, and these were just uh, things which were which were um, taken off in in the post war period. And the new uh, government, the new administration, was focused more and is still focused more on the 1982-1995 war. That nobody is uh, right now focusing their attention on. The, the memorials and the, and the monuments from the from the uh, from the Second World War, and this is the same thing with with the with the with the partisan memorials uh, throughout throughout the country and so on. So so that that's the the concrete case in 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 in, in Bosnia in question, and also uh, what we can see as well is uh, something which I did not go so much in, in, in my in my report. Uh, this attempt in trying to um, um, not ignore, uh, when well, we can use the term ignore, the suffering of the Roma in Yasnovac itself. And, and that's something which is, you know, Yasnovac is it's not viewed as a, as a place where, uh, you know, everybody was killed, but rather the suffering of, of only Serbs. Whereas, uh, you know, right now the, the, the Boston Serb government is creating a new memorial in, in Gradina, where the, 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 the Roma who Try and come to commemorate their victims there. At least try to give a speech. And this is this is told this was told me by one representative of for Roma Association in Sarajevo. Uh, the official uh, Bosnian Serb government has their own Roma representative who they want to see there. You know? um, so so uh, the 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 manipulation of memory 
the hijacking of memory still exists to this day, which is right now connected not so much with the Holocaust uh, and genocide distortion from the Second World War, but has a lot to do with political uh, 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 events currently in the country itself. And, and that's something which, which makes things even much more, much more uh, difficult uh, to say. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, Margarita mentioned my name after Hikmet, so maybe it's uh, uh, important that first I would mention the question about uh, acknowledgement and memori memori memorialization in Slovenia, which is quite interesting due to the fact that uh, actually it is much, much more it is it is very much influenced by this uh, international framework about the commemoration of the Roma um, uh, genocide day or uh, or the commemoration of the Holocaust uh, Memorial Day uh, in twenty. 7th of January. And I've already seen uh, the question of Daniel Voyak, uh, and I will later answer this question because uh, my third intervention uh, con is connected with this issue. Uh, what is interesting in the case of Slovenia is that we have a quite big uh, national uh, delegation at the IRA, and that uh, within this delegation there are very many committed, personally committed people uh, who are striving for uh, commemoration of the Roma genocide. Actually, it's uh, done on private initiative, I could say, or uh, uh, people who are actually engaged as scholars as of, and, of course, as a members of this um, delegation. But the point is that from the official pa part of the state, the 2nd August is not recognized as, a official, as an official uh, comm commemoration day for the commemoration of the genocide of the Roma. So consequently, people uh, who started to speak about genocide of the Roma during the Second World War, uh, and of course also partisan killings uh, uh, in the same time during the se Second World War were people who were organizing different cultural or educational events. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, some uh, national museums has quite important role. For example, in uh, 2011, um, the Slovene Ethnographic Museum, together with one um, private uh, institution uh, in Maribor, organized the first lecture, which is the first lecture according to my knowledge, prepared by Sinto Rom, by Sinto uh, from Gorenska, and he presented there his uh, findings and his uh, publication of the books. And in the recent, uh, and in following years, then also at this occasion of 8th of April or one evening before, uh, some events uh, considering the memorialization or education or raising of awareness of the genocide of the Roma were organized and these were uh, in the form of uh, lectures and um, uh, commemorations. And I also need to mention the synagogue Maribor, the Maribor synagogue, who also also paid uh, a great attention to the uh, commemoration of the Roma genocide. Uh, and it is interesting, for example, just to mention when the Slovenia uh, officially declared the Holocaust Memorial Day in 2008, the then director, Marian Tosh, outlined that Holocaust was the culmination of the genocide that affected during Second World War not only Jews, but also Roma Slavs, political op opponents, LGBT, sorry, 
uh, prisoners, uh, the physically weak and people with mental disabilities. This quote, maybe it's not so uh, important from the first side, but it is very important in terms of symbolic connotation because Roma were placed on the second, um, on the second, um, as the second victims mentioned in this quote. Um, and uh, late in later years, for example, um, the National Museum of Contemporary Art and Roma activists also organized some presentation of the book uh, at this time at the occasion of 7th of April. And from 2015 on approximately the 2nd August, uh, when it was declared on the European level, uh, the, the, the 2nd August is also commemorated on the local level, mainly uh, from two uh, important uh, actors. One would be uh, Roma Association from Prekmurje, and uh, the other would be also one institute in Ljubljana who actually later somehow um, dismissed these events uh, due to um, certain reasons. And for me, what is also important to mention for you is that we actually do not have official or uh, how to say um, official um, monument or um, uh, lieu de memoir uh, where uh, such a kind of uh, commemoration could happen. Uh, it was actually um, in, in I don't remember by heart now the year exactly, but it was actually around 2011 and later uh, that a new monument was uh, was constructed, was built, was uh, established uh, in front of the Begunje, um, uh, of former Nazi Begunje prison uh, um, uh, institution. And actually this uh, monument is not um, uh, proclaimed as a kind of uh, formal uh, monument. And uh, it is also important to mention the second plate, uh, the second plaque. It is uh, actually a plaque which was put on the house uh, in some, at, at some location in Murska Sobota to uh, commemorate all the victims of Roma who suffered during the Second World War. Um, there are also some other graves, for example, it's important to mention the grave of two persons who were killed at Turnišče as hostages, uh, but they were not actually mentioned as uh, Roma. Uh, it is obviously recognizable if you are local from their family names, from their actually uh, surnames. Um, so that would be shortly all. Um, Slovenian National Association of Roma uh, is also striving to recognize the 2nd of August as an official uh, Roma uh, Genocide uh, Remembrance Day. But uh, so far they were not successful uh, when they applied um, to the to the Slovenian uh, to the Slovenian state for for this. So that would be all from my part uh, so far. Thank you. Um, so do you, we'll come back to you if there's something else you want to add. We have a couple of comments in the uh, chat from one from Daniel Voyak um, about. Uh, the State Commission, Archival State Commission in BIH, and also um, another comment on Roma memorials in BIH. And we also have another comment from Stefan Stankovic, who has pointed out that there is a, a location, a monument in southern Serbia and Leskovac down in southern Serbia 
uh, something to be noted. I'm also going to, as a point of privilege, as the moderator here, I want to point out that one of our graduates, our alums, very distinguished one, Krista Hegberg, is in the audience. And it's really wonderful to see you back at Hiram and Krista. Uh, so please weigh in. She's a former, formerly affiliated with the US Holocaust Museum. Um, uh, Laura, do you you want to make a comment here? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Laura Cohen. I'm the executive director of the Kufferberg Holocaust Center. It's really wonderful to be in conversation with all of you. And um, I just wanted to make just two very brief comments. The first is our panel this morning actually uh, dove into quite a lot of the nuances that Husto mentioned regarding the Holocaust in Bulgaria. And while we didn't focus specifically on um, what happened to Roma and Sinti people, we absolutely talked about the dearth of research the contestation about whether the Holocaust even took place, the impact of um, the, uh, or the, the creation, if you will, of the memory of, and the myth of rescue. So I put in the chat uh, the link for that in case people are interested. And I also wanted to mention and ask all of the panelists, um, I believe, you know, Father Patrick Dubois and Marco Gonzalez, who um, run the organization Yahad and Unum, and they do a lot of research and presentations on the Holocaust by bullets, including and specifically on, and I might get the, the, the pronunciation wrong, Poramos. And so they're doing a lot of education on genocide against Roman Sinti people across Europe. And I think what's one of the things, you know, from a center like ours, um, which is really important is, and is a tension that we're constantly facing, if we're only ever focusing on the genocide of Jewish people, the Holocaust within our museums, how do we get people who are not Jewish and younger people who may have no connection to this history to care? So for example, we just mounted a show on the concentration camp system, and it, it is very important for us to be able to talk about all of the different victims groups, because what we find is when students um, connect, for example, around their own experiences in their communities or personally have struggled, even if let's say they come from places um, where indigenous populations have suffered, these are ways for this history to be relevant for them. And I also just wanted to talk about how um, that is a tension though, so I think that one of the things we see with uh, Holocaust museums who are looking at the Holocaust as but one genocide, there's more willingness to talk about all of the different groups, specifically Roma and Sinti. For some of the more established ones, it's a lot harder because then you start to bump up against um, the desires of people who fund the museums and often are older, are Jewish and uh, have a much more conservative view. So I just wanted to throw that out there um, and to see what you all thought of that, if that was your experience. I wonder if Christo, you would like would you like to continue with the part of, of acknowledgement, share a little bit about the area and also address this question because I think it's so so related. I will address it to Laura, but I would like to hear about Bulgaria as well. Yes, uh, I'm ready to continue, but I was <laughs> waiting uh, Tanya to give me a sign. I'm sorry, apologize. No there. problem. No problem. Okay. So. Uh, Maybe I should uh, say that uh, during the communist time uh, in Bulgaria, there was no commemoration even of the Jewish genocide. And of course, the Roma genocide was absolutely unthinkable. No, no way that uh, anyone will recognize that there was a genocide with Roma because, as I mentioned, the Bulgarian Tsar, the Bulgarian king was... Um, uh, the, the savior of uh, the Jewish and uh, Roma community. Although that uh, during the Second World War, 11,343 Jewish people were sent to the concentration camp uh, in Treblinka from uh, the new territories of Bulgaria, from Macedonia and from Greece. And uh, in uh, different uh, towns in Bulgaria during that period, during the communist time, if there were some partisans, uh, Roma partisans, their names will be written in the general 
a monument which existed in the town or in the city, but uh, there was nothing uh, specially about uh, Roma soldiers because during the Second World War there were a lot of uh, Roma soldiers uh, who were participating in the Bulgarian army. And uh, after the democratic changes, the situation didn't change actually. Uh, last 15 to 20 years, uh, the day of commemoration of Roma genocide actually was 8th of April. And uh, different Roma organizations, mainly Roma organizations, were organizing different events. Uh, for example, um, a commemoration in a church uh, in the, for those who are uh, Christian Roma, and the Muslim Roma would do it in a different way. And very often the Roma would go to a river in the town or in the village to uh, throw some flowers uh, on the river, or they will light candles in the church. And uh, this was uh, until uh, recently, until two, three years ago, uh, when the Bulgarian Roma learned that uh, 2nd of August is uh, the International Roma Genocide Day. And uh, last two, three years, the Roma, mainly the Roma organizations started to uh, commemorate uh, the Roma genocide. And uh, unfortunately, most of the Roma uh, didn't know anything about, about the Roma genocide in Europe. It was not uh, popular in Bulgaria because of the communist propaganda during the communist regime. There was no information about this, what happened with the Roma. Uh, in the different concentration camps and mainly in Auschwitz. And uh, there was no any mentions of the Roma genocide, Roma Holocaust in the textbooks, uh, Bulgarian, in Bulgarian history textbooks, for example. In my report, I was um, doing an overview of uh, different te textbooks and uh, there was just mention of the word Roma several times, but nothing on particularly, there was no any single lesson in the textbooks on Roma genocide or Roma Holocaust. And uh, there, were, uh, there is no any single uh, monument or uh, any single sign of um, Roma who were uh, killed during the Second World War or uh, that there was a Roma genocide in Bulgaria, unfortunately. And as I told you, there were a lot of Roma soldiers and uh, participating in the Second World War uh, on the in the Bulgarian army. And there is no even a monument which says that uh, so many uh, Roma soldiers were killed um, in, the constant, uh, in the Second World War. And uh, there was no any sign of the attacks uh, of uh, Nazi groups uh, over the Roma uh, communities in Bulgaria during the Second World War. And there is no information about this, that there were attempts to send the Roma to concentration camps. So this is a, a, a question which is taboo, a topic which is taboo. And uh, there is just this uh, myth that the Roma were uh, saved by the Bulgarians together with, with the Jewish and even uh, worse in my um, lectures with the Bulgarian teachers. Very often I would hear that, oh, the gypsies are simply lying. Uh, there was no any kind of uh, repression or uh, any kind of attempts to be sent to concentration camps or there were no attacks by Nazi organization, Nazi groups uh, during the Second World War on Roma communities. The, the Bulgarian teachers simply do not want to accept and to believe in that. So unfortunately, the, the 2nd of August uh, as a day of Roma genocide commemoration is done only by uh, Roma NGOs. And um, there, unfortunately, there is no uh, any book on uh, Roma genocide in Bulgaria written by Roma or non-Roma historians. And uh, the information is very, very limited. Yeah, unfortunately. So I think this is what I wanted to say more or less. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Magda, do you wanna add uh, your comments with respect to 
Yes, I would like to add a few comments, but perhaps Please. I would first start with um, we, with a few comments uh, about uh, Laura's. Um, oh, sure. But Please. also say sure. a few words about a question that we we, we have in, in the chat that uh, asked about our view on the correct term uh, for for the Roma genocide, the Roma Holocaust, Poraimos, uh, Kalitrash, uh, and, and so on. And Laura, I, I'll focus more on the terminology, but I think you'd see the connection between terminology and these sites of memory in, in, in many ways. And um, I, I would perhaps start by saying that there is no consensus regarding the term that should be used to describe the persecution and mass atrocities perpetrated by the Nazi regimes and their allies against the Romani people in Europe. And I think that in fact, this is one of the most sensitive, loaded and controversial topics in political, institutional and intergovernmental spaces. And often the choices over one term or another are made in the realm of political, epistemic and cultural power. We would see that for instance, um, um, the European Parliament talks both about the Roma Holocaust and the Roma genocide. IRA uses the, uh, the term Roma genocide and the Council of Europe uh, and the United Nations see the Roma as victims of, uh, of, of the Holocaust. But I think that one of, uh, uh, of the main reasons of opposition to include the Roma victims under the Holocaust umbrella comes from the idea of, from this idea of a unique fate of the Jewish people that were targeted for annihilation. And there is a whole conversation here uh, um, uh, about the Roma as well. Um, and I think that in, in, in these spaces and in this conversation, it's been hard for us in this study to, to use a particular term. So in the study, you will see that we decided to use Roma Holocaust slash, slash Roma genocide with the idea that the Roma Holocaust is not a different Holocaust, but is actually, we are talking about the Roma victims of the Holocaust. And with the idea that the Roma genocide is not just one Roma genocide, because there have been several genocides against Roma uh, across Europe, including the gypsy roundup in, um, in the 1700s in, in Spain. So it's hard. But when it comes to, to Romani terms, which we would use interchangeably with the English ones, we use Samudari Pen slash Poraimos, but nobody has had any sort of, uh, of complaints about Kalitrash or other terms. There is more controversy about Samudari Pen and Poraimos. And in some countries we use Samudari and in some other we use for IMOS. So the, the, the short answer is, you know, context matter and the voices of the people, the victims and the survivors and their descendants are uh, important um, um, uh, as well. But when it comes to, to acknowledgement um, and, and um, memorialization, I, I would add that similar to other parts of the world, state institutions and other stakeholders have pushed and pulled various strategies and processes of both remembering, but also forgetting or acknowledging and silencing the memory of the Roma victims of, of the Holocaust. And we know that frequently securing and retaining public memory and memory site or memory sites is contingent on political interest and power resources. Um, we, we can say that the no, normative acknowledgement of memorial days of the Samudari Pen has been perhaps one of the most concrete and visible evidence of will and intention to remember the Roma victims of the Holocaust taken by several states in Southeastern Europe. Um, for instance, Serbia has prioritized Memorial Days with significance at the national level, um, and, but frequently August 2nd has been recognized as a shared day of commemoration across the region and broadly at the European and global levels. For instance, Croatia and Romania have adopted laws recognizing August 2nd as the Roma Memor uh, Holocaust Memorial Day. Um, and other countries like North Macedonia or Montenegro observe August 2nd, but there is no normative acknowledgement of this Memorial Day. Uh, more broadly in the region, if we were to look at Albania, but also Bosnia, Bulgaria, Greece, or Kosovo, there is no normative acknowledgement 
of August 2nd or any other significant national date regarding the Roma victims of the Holocaust or the Roma plight during World War War in the specific country. Um, there are quite a few memorials in, in the region, but uh, uh, not enough if you are to look at uh, the specifics in each country. What is perhaps uh, um, interesting is, is that in some of the former Yugoslav countries like Serbia and Hikmet also mentioned Bosnia, there are some memorials that um, were built during the Holocaust and some of these memorials sometimes uh, are um, uh, placed in uh, areas documented for massacres of um, um, uh, of the Roma, but there we have no information, and there I don't think that there are any memorials of the Roma victims of the Holocaust or other World War II collective injustices in Albania, Bulgaria, Kosovo, Montenegro, or um, uh, North uh, uh, Macedonia. And one more point about history teaching. Um, I would say that um, across the region, we identify distortion, minimization, and omission of historical facts regarding Roma in history textbooks and classes. And to us, that is very concern, is concerning. Um, and we could not identify examples of history books uh, that include and acknowledge Roma's historical figures, resistance, or, or, or contributions, and therefore, reforming and rewriting the national histories, especially school textbooks to prevent manipulation of history and victim hierarchies is, is, is mandatory in so many ways. Thank you so much, Margareta. Um, um, I was just informed by Krista Heckberg that she still is on staff at the US Holocaust Museum. And I apologize for that. And uh, she can, she can, she's offering services and resources at the museum. And I will circulate her email to, to all of our participants on this panel. Um, are there any other comments that any of the panelists would like to make? Any I would also want to thank uh, uh, Krista because she has been a very, um, very kind and it helped us a lot with uh, with information and documents. Uh, so we are we are grateful to her. But I think that uh, perhaps if we are you know if we have ten more minutes, uh, I would launch a conversation about distortion and uh, denial um, of the Roma Holocaust. And perhaps I would just um, say a few words and uh, please, please, the other uh, uh, colleagues, I will yes. start by saying that today there has been no scholarly intercommunity or political consensus regarding the place uh, and the memory of the Roma Sinti uh, and Sinti victims in the Holocaust or remote from the Holocaust. And there has, there has been no mainstream or political or academic initiatives to develop an official definition of denial and distortion of the Roma history during the Holocaust in Southeastern uh, Europe. We identified several categories that are based primarily on the situation in the 11 countries covered uh, in our research. Um, we defined denial as any attempt to negate and erase the established historical facts and the extent of the extermination of Roma during the Holocaust. We talked both about um, uh, hardcore denial and softcore denial. And when it comes to, to distortion, one of the, the forms of, of distortion that we identified was this uh, idea of complete historical silence and obliteration of the Roma victims of the Holocaust, which uh, Hikmet and Yutania uh, talked about. Um, and I think that one of the most obvious example is the fact that the Roma Holocaust is regarded as a secluded history not worthy of being included in textbooks, museums, and sites of, of memory. But we also find um, distortion through minimization of the number of Roma victims and the cruelty um, and the impact of the mechanisms of distortion. We identified discursive and propagandistic deracialization of the Nazi measures and ideology that targeted Roma and Sinti. And this form of distortion consists in twisting and silencing the political and social construction of the Roma as an inferior 
a social and a criminal race that justify the Nazi ideas and measures. And this is often done in view of justifying the crimes through the lens of criminality and other unwanted behaviors um, and sidelining uh, uh, the Roma uh, Holocaust. But we also found instances of vocabulary and symbols that were used um, to threaten and terrify the Roma, although the Holocaust was not necessarily mentioned. Also victim and genocide hierarchies, glorifying and whitewashing perpetrators, acts and symbols of the Roma Holocaust damaging Roma Holocaust memorials, archives, and um, Christo talked about this, and symbols, mockery of the Roma Holocaust jokes we've seen this year. Uh, Jimmy Carr um, uh, made the news in Europe for mockery, um, for mockery of the Roma Holocaust, but also blaming the Roma for the Holocaust and claims that there has been no, uh, no uh, centralized plan to exterminate the Roma. But I will pass the floor quickly to, to the other um, colleagues to give some examples from, from, from the region. Christo, would you like to start? Yes, I was almost going to <laughs> offer. Well, uh, I will start with this, that uh, your last words, uh, blaming Roma for the Holocaust. This is something which um, very often we see or we read or we um, hear. So um, we know that in Germany, uh, there were um, Roma and Sinti who were highly uh, socialized included in the German society. They were, they were musicians, they were artists, they were even members of the uh, German army, yeah, and uh, during the Second World War, but still, nevertheless, uh, they were taken from the theater, from the restaurants where they were playing music or from the army and they were sent to the concentration camps. And uh, in most of the cases, and this is what I wrote in uh, my report, that uh, uh, I was giving the example of my family. My grandparents were not uh, asocial. They were not criminals. They were just ordinary Roma trying to make some kind of living, having their professions, Roma professions. And uh, I mean, my, my family was not an exception. I mean, th this kind of families, we have had thousands and thousands. But uh, this what happened to uh, my family during the Second World War, the, the attempt to be sent to the concentration camp. And after that, uh, the order to go to the end of the town. And uh, there was a mass grave prepared. But again, there was an order that the Roma shouldn't be uh, killed uh, in the mass grave. And then after that, they were sent to neighboring town uh, villages to work uh, hard labor work there. So all these kinds of punishments against Roma were uh, only and just because they are Roma. And there is also another very important fact. I have to stress on it. I have to point on it. Uh, the, in, during this time, in 1940s, in 1930s, 40s, the Roma were Muslims in Bulgaria, most of the Roma. And in most of the cases, they were living in Roma settlements, Roma Mahala, which was mixed uh, with Turkish and Roma. And when there was an order, uh, the Roma to be sent to the train station, uh, actually the police, the people knew which houses from this mixed Roma Turkish settlement are the Roma houses, and they were taking only those families to the train station and to this uh, mass grave. And actually, I did hear that from one of the Turkish uh, guy who is 95 years old. Unfortunately, he died recently. And uh, he was telling that the police, the uh, soldiers did not come to the Turkish houses. They came only to the Roma houses, knowing that this, in these houses there are Roma and they took only the Roma to, the, to, to be sent to the train station for the, to be deported to the concentration camp and after a few days to the uh, end of the town for the mass grave. And uh, another issue, 
why the Roma are very often blamed? Because uh, I heard that also in some uh, video films uh, with uh, Roma who were uh, sent to Transnistria in Romania, there is a notion of shame. And there is a notion of, um, how I should say it, yeah, large in Romani language, that uh, the Roma women uh, could not speak about this, what happened to them uh, during that time, uh, being uh, 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 sent to concentration camps or what happened in the concentration camps and all these kinds of things. And, um, or the, 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 the Roma woman cannot tell to their children or grandchildren that she was raped in the, from the soldiers. This, this kind of things also happened, of course. And this kind of uh, cultural issue, cultural understanding of shame uh, was very wrongly used by the governments, by the scientists, which was interpreted like, if they don't speak about this, that didn't exist, that didn't happen, that, that there was no any genocide uh, with, with Roma. So those cultural issues are also very important. And uh, if you want really to touch those issues, you have to uh, be a member of the community. The people have to trust you. And uh, that the people cannot speak, or even the children and the grandchildren of, the, of these people who are somehow oppressed, uh, somehow beaten or deported, they even cannot speak about this freely, what happened to them. They have to trust you, and they have to believe that you are not going to point it as a something dirty because in the Roma community still there is this notion of dirty, polluted and unclean. And it's, it's very, very dangerous uh, if the people uh, have this feeling that uh, they are uh, pointed like this family is polluted because this and this happened to their uh, wives or to their grandmother or to their whatever. So... Uh, to, to sum up, I, I would like to say that uh, doing um, research on Roma genocide uh, among Roma is not an easy, uh, it's not an easy issue, especially when you use the uh, oral history approach. And um, uh, this, this very wrong understanding from the society, this very um, the, the attempts to um, minimize, to deny, uh, to distortion all this what happened to, to Roma is unfortunately um, very largely uh, spread, especially in social media. And we can see that and we can read on this, uh, especially when there is a, a celebration of 8th of April or commemoration of the Roma genocide on 2nd of uh, August, the comments of the people, representatives of the majority societies, mainstream societies, how they um, comment and how they, what they write and what kind of uh, opinion they have about this. And uh, again, I think that uh, in order to uh, overcome this denial and distortion uh, we still have to work extremely hard uh, in order that uh, the Roma communities get kind of recognition uh, about this, what happened, especially in Balkan countries where there was no this, uh, uh, I mean, we know about Croatia with the Ustasha and the concentration camps, but in some other countries, there were no uh, concentration camps, but still there was a genocide against Roma. And uh, there is a need, a lot, a, a lot of new research, a lot of new investigations, uh, uh, historians and Roma activists and uh, Roma and non-Roma in order to bring new information about this. And again, I would say that it is very sensitive issue because of the shame, because of the latch which exists uh, among the Roma communities. So I will stop here. Thank you very much. Um. Thank you. Uh, Alenka, do you have anything else to add? I just want to keep in view of the time. We're a minute over. So if we're going to answer, let's do it very quickly. 
Yes, I think that I I agree with the description what uh, is published around the uh, uh, commemoration days. Uh, of course, there is a lot of information about denials or um, issues which were mentioned by by Christo, but I owe the, the the short intervention about the partisan killings of Roma in Slovenia. Uh, actually, this issue was opened or described also during the socialism, uh, but at that time historians were already um, actually called to the obliteration and oblivion because it was a stain, uh, unremovable stain on the natural liberation, liberation war. So several historians who published about partisan killings in socialist time, like Polich, Ferenc, uh, Ferenc and others, suggested that it's not good to open the old wounds. Uh, and we may wonder if this is the, re the main reason why this Holocaust research uh, is not uh, is is not is under research in Slovenia in such an um, obvious way. We actually have only one historian who made her BA diploma and who started to uh, 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 look at the archives and knew what happened actually uh, through the Second World War. What happened during these uh, partisan killings and things like uh, like that, and. Um, so far, historians explicitly recognize the violence, the violence of partisans against the Roma as a war crime and not as a genocide because partisan authorities had never, that is a quote, ordered systematic killings of the Roma based on racial laws and doctrines. But on the other hand, I must admit that there was persistent persistent anti-Gypsism present uh, among the, the local population, uh, newspapers, or um, and of course uh, among the partisan uh, soldiers. Um, but I think that still we need to do uh, much more concise research after we would draw a conclusion. But the problem is that this issue is again and again politicized due to the, uh, with the, with the intention to revive, revise, um, with the intention to the historical review, uh, revisionism, intending to actually um, denigrate the partisan liberation movement and put it on the same ground as uh, perhaps fascism, Nazism and other, other forms of totalitarian regime. And this would be also even more har harmful than helpful for Roma communities if this happened. Well, thank you so much. I, somebody want to make a comment? because we, we should be going soon. I, I just want to thank all of our panelists. I want to thank you, uh, Magda, for uh, bringing this to Harriman, uh, that we had the opportunity to share this as a preliminary curtain raiser before you do the formal next month. And I, I just want to thank you and for this important research. And I just might add that I'm paying very close attention to the Ukraine war. And I've already seen testimonials where Polish officials are pulling Roma out of the lines and not allowing them to enter Poland. And of course, we now have many documented rapes of women and systematic raping of Ukrainian women, no doubt that all women are quite vulnerable to this right now uh, in the Ukraine war. This is deeply disturbing. There's a lot of crimes that must be documented um, and uh, the work goes on. But I really wanna thank all of these distinguished historians and genocide scholars for being at Hiraman today to share this important research. We wish you all the best in finishing it and we look forward to seeing new books forthcoming. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. See everybody in the near future, I hope. Thank you. All the best to everybody, wherever you are, be safe. Thanks. Thank bye you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.